a small petrol tank was put between the steering wheel and the engine. The engine was beefed up with overhead valves and anything else they could think of. And they got rid of the spoked wheels and fitted solid discs. Finally, they added that super sexy body and the Model T became a racing car. The only thing that remained standard are the brakes, which were next to useless on the road and positively deadly on the track. So with the car in bits, we have the beginnings of her history. She was made by a bunch called George and Jobling up in Newcastle upon Tyne. But who drove her all those years ago? To find out, I'm heading right to the birthplace of motor racing, what's left of the Brooklyn circuit in deepest Surrey. While Henry Ford was designing the Model T, across the pond in the UK, the British were building the world's first purpose-built racetrack. On July 6th, 1907, the first race was started at the new track, and it marked the start of a golden era of motorsport. It had taken nine months to build and cost over £150,000, a small fortune at the turn of the century. And this is it. Over the next 30 years, records would be set and broken, and this track would become synonymous with motoring success. At three and a quarter miles in length, with two huge banks 30 feet high, motor racing soon caught the public's imagination. And the brave young chaps who took to the circuit soon became household names. Fame and fortune, not to mention women, followed them on and off the track. Deep in the archives, I discovered that the driver and owner of our car was a chap called A.E. George. One half of George and Jobling, who owned a Ford dealership up in Newcastle upon Tyne. It's right here that 90 years ago, A.E. George and his fearless chums tuned their cars into fearsome racing machines before taking their lives in their hands over there on the hallowed track. But what was a Geordie car salesman doing risking life and limb on the Brooklyn's banks? I'm hoping motor racing historian David Burgess Wise knows the answer. The people who came down here were the pioneers, brave men who wanted to go faster than anybody else, and the dealers who came down here, people like A.E. George, they had something to prove. Perhaps more than the wealthy amateur, they wanted to show that their make of car was the best. So that's where the phrase, win on Sunday, sell on Monday came from? Exactly. And racing a Model T Ford, I can tell you, is a pretty dangerous pastime. But this is how the Ford first appeared at Brooklands, just a strip chassis. Uh, George, being a motor trader, knew the easiest way of making a car go quickly was just to throw the body away. It's so that's just what he did. One seat, and in fact he made it so light that he had to put a piece of pig iron over the back axle to keep the wheels on the track. So really it was nothing but a giant pram with an engine. Well, exactly. And if you look Then at in the 1913, George covered up the pram with its super sexy brass body. But why? Wheels. It's the only racing car I've ever heard of that had a polished brass body, and I suspect... 